In this video, I will be chlorinating elemental arsenic to arsenic 3 chloride, and then make triphenyl arsine. Triphenyl arsine is useful as a ligand in a range of palladium catalyzed cross coupling reactions. But for now, I am just curious about doing organo arsenic chemistry, and perhaps I will find use for the product another time. So let's just get started. So here is the arsenic that I will be using for this reaction. It is an old ampule from many decades ago, but before I break it, I will prepare the reaction setup so that it doesn't sit in the air for too long and oxidize. For the chlorination we will need dry chlorine, since water will hydrolyze the arsenic 3 chloride to arsenous acid and hydrochloric acid. So to dry the stream of chlorine gas, I set up a gas washing bottle and fill it with some concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is able to take up water from a gas that has passed through it, so it is a simple way to dry a gas. Now I set up the chlorine production part of the setup. So I have set up a flask with a stopper and a gas adapter. To produce the chlorine, I will use TCCA and hydrochloric acid. The cheapest source of TCCA is pool chlorine tablets, which are pretty much pure TCCA. But they are too large to fit through the neck of the flask. The tablets are also as hard as bricks, so I will have to smash them apart to use them. So I put all of the tablets into a Ziploc bag and put that bag into two other Ziploc bags. I smash it with a hammer to break up the tablets into small enough pieces so that it will fit through the neck of the flask. Care must be taken, since the TCCA powder is very irritating to breathe in, and unavoidably some will always escape to small tears from hitting it with a hammer. After the tablets have succumbed to the abuse, I put 200 grams of the TCCA into the flask I set up before. Now I attach a dropping funnel on top and pour in 200 ml with 37% hydrochloric acid. I then connect the gas adapter to the gas washing bottle. Now next to that, I set up part of a distillation apparatus, with just a condenser, the curved vacuum receiver adapter, and a receiving flask. And through the condenser, I pump water that is heated to 80 degrees Celsius. Now to the vacuum adapter, I connect an inverted funnel trap. The funnel is submerged in a beaker, that contains a solution of sodium thiosulfate and sodium hydroxide. Chlorine that escapes will react with the sodium thiosulfate, and any arsenic 3 chloride will react with water, which will produce hydrochloric acid and arsenous acid, which will both get neutralized by the sodium hydroxide. Now that the setup is mostly complete, I can break the ampule containing the arsenic. I don't have a special opener or glass cutter, so I will whip out the hammer once more. I cover the ampule in some paper towels, and then hit it repeatedly with the hammer to break it. Surprisingly, it took more than one hit to break it. Now the mess is contained to the paper towel, so I can just pour the pieces into a crystallizing dish and pick up the rest. Now that I have the shiny pieces of arsenic, I can set them up for chlorination. So with a spatula, I carefully add in 12.5 grams of the arsenic pieces into the condenser and shove them inside. When all of the arsenic has been added, I attach a gas adapter to the left side of the column. I then connect this to the other side of the gas washing bottle. Now that the setup is complete, I can start the reaction. So I stopper the dropping funnel and then add some of the hydrochloric acid to the flask with the TCCA. In this reaction, the chlorine from hydrochloric acid and the chlorine from TCCA react to form chlorine gas, while the hydrogen will take the spot the chlorine was before, to make cyanuric acid. We can see gas is starting to go through the gas washing bottle. At first not much is happening, since all of the air still has to be pushed out, so we wait for the chlorine to fill the apparatus. After a few minutes, we can see something is happening. The arsenic pieces are becoming white, and some vapors are condensing in the apparatus. I test out some different speeds of the chlorine production, and when a lot of chlorine is produced, the reaction causes the arsenic pieces to ignite, and glow from the heat that is produced in the reaction. We can see a lot of vapors coming off the arsenic, and we can also see liquid condensing. In the background we can see vapors, because the trap isn't able to keep up at this speed. Arsenic 3 chloride is sensitive to moist air, and will start fuming due to the formation of arsenous acid and hydrochloric acid. The arsenous acid is only stable in solution, and will decompose immediately, and form arsenic 3 oxide and water. The fine dust of arsenic 3 oxide is especially dangerous, as it can deposit on surfaces and contaminate it. Though the danger of such small quantities, and when not exposed chronically, is not very significant. Anyhow, in the receiving flask the arsenic 3 chloride is steadily coming in. Since this was the first time I'm doing this, something had to go wrong. So through suckback, some of the solution from the trap got sucked into the receiving flask. Luckily it doesn't really matter, since I was making more than I needed anyway. So because of this, 
I lost about half of the arsenic 3 chloride. Anyhow, I just swapped the adapter and the receiving flask and also put an ice bath underneath to condense more vapors. I continue with the reaction like before and try to keep the addition similar to the consumption. At this rate, the formation of arsenic 3 chloride is relatively steady and we can see it slowly flowing down. The reaction doesn't take very long and I am finished in less than an hour. When it is done, it looks like there is still some stuff in the condenser, but it doesn't seem to react with the chlorine. It is probably just a thin layer of oxide and impurities and the refraction from the condenser makes it look like more than it really is. If I were to do this again, I would improve the setup by placing a condenser with cold water above the receiving flask to more effectively condense the vapors. I dismantled the setup and I am left with a yellow liquid. Pure arsenic 3 chloride is transparent, so I suspect chlorine is dissolved into the liquid and turning it yellow. So to remove the chlorine and any other possible contaminations, I distill the liquid with short path vacuum distillation. I pull a vacuum on the setup and immediately gas is already escaping and the liquid begins to bubble. I start heating to boil the liquid, which will kick out all of the chlorine and then wait until it all distills over. We can see that when it begins to boil, it has all become clear and it distills over clearly as well. When it is done, the flask is completely dry and only a very tiny bit of white stuff is left behind, which is likely arsenic trioxide. Now that I have purified arsenic 3 chloride, I can move on with making the organo arsenic compound, triphenylarsine. So to the fuming arsenic 3 chloride, I quickly add 21 ml of chlorobenzene and stop it again. I mix it around a bit and then set it on the side. Now I set up a new 3 neck flask and add 75 ml of benzene. Here I have a block of sodium metal, which I will cut up in pieces. I then add 10.6 grams of the sodium pieces to the flask. The sodium starts to give off small bubbles of hydrogen gas because of traces of water that are present in the benzene. I then add a stir bar and move the flask to a heating mantle. I attach a Dimroth condenser and then stopper the left neck. Then to the right neck, I added a small dropping funnel. Now to this dropping funnel, I quickly add in all of the arsenic 3 chloride chlorobenzene mixture. When it has all been added, I stopper the dropping funnel. I add a little bit of the mixture to the reaction flask and then bring it to a boil. Occasionally, I add a little bit more of the mixture. When it has been boiling for about 20 minutes and the reaction mixture has darkened, I add all of the remaining mixture in the dropping funnel to the flask. I then leave it to reflux for a day. In this reaction, the sodium works as a reducing agent and facilitates the reaction by picking up chlorine atoms. One by one, the phenyl groups can attach themselves to the arsenic and finally form triphenyl arsine with sodium chloride as a byproduct. I come back after 22 hours and the mixture has darkened a lot and the reaction should be finished. I take the flask off heat and remove the condenser and dropping funnel. I open the left neck and while hot, I filter the mixture with vacuum filtration through a Buchner funnel with a paper filter. I wash the flask and filter twice with some fresh benzene and then leave the residue to dry for a bit on the filter. After a while, the residue looks dry enough. So I take the residue and put it back into the reaction flask. This residue still contains triphenyl arsine that is trapped in the powder. So to extract it, I will boil the residue in benzene. So I add some benzene and then set the flask in a heating mantle to boil it. When it has been boiling for a minute, I take it off heat and filter it again in the same setup. I wash it again with some fresh benzene and then repeat the extraction procedure once more. When that is done, I have collected all of the filtrate and we can see some of the solid particles have come through the filter. So to remove them, I quickly filter it again through some cotton directly into another flask. Now to remove all of the benzene and remaining reactants, I set the filter up for short path distillation. After a while, all of the benzene has boiled off and likely some chlorobenzene is still remaining. So I empty the receiving flask and then pull a vacuum to get it to come over. After leaving it running for a while, everything that can come over should have come over. So I stop the distillation. I then set up a beaker and start heating some 95% ethanol. When it is boiling hot, I pour it all into the flask with the residue from the distillation and then stir it for a bit on the hot plate. This should dissolve part of the triphenyl arsine. I then remove it off heat, stopper it and allow it to cool down. I then poured the upper layer into a small beaker and then agitated it with a glass rod. This caused the triphenyl arsine to crystallize out of solution. I then filter it all with vacuum filtration through a Buchner funnel with a paper filter to collect the crystals. I washed the crystals once with some cold 95% ethanol. After repeating this process several times, I am left with 7.21 grams of white triphenyl arsine crystals. This is a yield of 35%
which is lower than the 88% from literature. Though there was still more that could be crystallized, it wasn't worth the effort to squeeze every last bit of triphenyl arsine out of it. Compared to the literature, I didn't use powdered sodium and added most of my chlorobenzene arsenic 3 chloride mixture at once, since it didn't boil spontaneously with addition. Probably because the sodium was in relatively large pieces, which slowed down the reaction. I did run the reaction several hours longer than the literature, but still the yield could be affected. Anyhow, that was it for this video. Let me know down below if you want to see more organo-arsenic chemistry, or some other spooky organometallic chemistry. Also, if you want, you can support my life risking chemistry on Patreon. See ya!